You can call it the most trending issue in the world at the moment because it's claiming a lot of lives. I'm talking about the coronavirus epidemic. The WHO is doing its best to curb its spread. But before that is achieved, the most countries have evacuated their nationals from China, the country from where the virus emerged. But the question is, is Ghana joining these countries to evacuate its nationals from China? And how are Ghanaian nationals, especially students, faring in China at the moment? Well, Kwachi Afrinyama and I will be right here in the UK, but provide you answers from China as well as Ghana. And I have with me Kwachi Afrinyama. Afre is a student journalist or rather prefer to be addressed as a, a renowned journalist with years of experience, currently a student journalist. Is, is that okay with you? Yeah, yeah, that's fine, Catherine. <laughs> so, so much embellishment, but it's okay, yeah. <laughs> you, you enjoy it, don't pretend. Anyway, it's okay. Nana, Nana had that quick before I just said back home in Ghana that evacuation is not entirely ruled out. So it's possible. And he said that measures have been put in place to handle these students should they be brought home. Mm. Before now, what we had heard was that the country was not ready. The health systems was not at the best position to deal with any possible situation. So now it's, it's a bit confusing to me as to where we really stand as a country. I think very apt comments coming from the president, particularly days after the Minority Caucus on the Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, led by its chairperson Samuel Kujetu Ablako, had issued an ranking ultimate member, rather. ranking member. Yeah, uh, on the on that committee, had issued a, a four-day or so ultimatum to government to evacuate uh, the Chinese students, uh, Ghanaian students in, in China. Uh, but if, if you listen to the president's comments and read read the text uh, carefully, you, you get a clear sense that government's sole intention at this point is not to evacuate them. And as the president talked about, they are collaborating with the Chinese government have, and have been doing so over the past couple of weeks um, in terms of providing the Ghanaian students there with food items and all that. Uh, he also talked about the fact that if it comes to the point that the country has to um, evacuate them, the they, they appropriate measures will be put in place to avert any fear and panic. And that will be the major conversation in Ghana if government decides to evacuate them whether we are prepared i'm sure many people will be scared that you know of, of the you know health implications of saying but the president has given mm. a firm assurance very well so let's now head to ghana let's speak to the people who are at the forefront of affairs and i'm talking about the parliament select committee on foreign affairs let's speak to the chairman of that committee to find out what preparations have been going on underground that we may not be aware? And I'm talking about Honorable Frank Anna Dompre, who is also the Member of Parliament for the people of uh, Samama Dwejiri, yeah. and also happens to be the Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Foreign Affairs. Hello, good morning, Honourable. Good morning, good morning. Can you tell us from where you stand, what specific measures have been put in place to that effect? It is not just about airlift centers. I mean, it's just about getting a hired um, aircraft to go and bring them home. But don't forget, once you do that, you put them in a confined area. And then the, the number of cases that we've had, if we have our operations are not up to, to, to tax, and we, we go and evacuate them, they will add, we may be adding insult to injury. So we had need to prepare in terms of our compliance system and all the medical uh, prerequisites that are met before we can go in there and airlift them. So put in context, I think that we are being cautious, which is good. And there is a, an international standard about how to go about these things. Countries that are on related things are we have a very, a very much stronger um, mitigation measures and adaptation measures. You can talk the U.S. or Japan and all these developed uh, countries. Mm. But honorable, we've been attempted to develop. Yeah, I just finished 
to allow this to be a defendant us with causing cases of the virus. So we need to pick a cue from that. I am not, uh, let me emphasize, I'm not saying that we shouldn't go and evacuate them, but we need to evacuate patients on top before we do that. And it does appear that government's sole focus is on providing relief for students within the Wuhan province, but those outside uh, that epicenter are also calling for the same level of support. Uh, will this happen? Um, the support was given to Kenya students in, in, in China, not necessarily the epicenter, but I cannot confirm that other places that have also uh, been, been okay. hit have also received the same treatment that mm. I have Mm, they said if they, they are yet to receive any we money spoke to them. A, anyway. Well, I, I have to cross check. I, I, I would not. I don't think that I have anything against what they are saying, and I have no justification to to accept that without. doubt. But I am saying that I need to speak to the authorities, and then uh, it, it, it would be unfair to, to leave some out, so that if some of them left that, we, we take precaution and do the needful. I know that in issues like this, various committees with similar interests do come together to collaborate efforts in dealing with the situation. At this point, has there been any of such collaboration between your committee and the Committee on Health as to dealing with the situation at hand? Don't forget, what we do as a committee is we do oversight of our ministry, and that is the Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration. So. A bit of oversight has been done, and that is how come we came uh, to be aware of all these that have been put in place and have been done in this regard. So we are not supposed to physically be part of uh, the medical arrangement. It's supposed to be done by the experts and, and the technocrats and, and, and the professional health professionals who are involved. But because it's also an international related matter, and our nationals are involved. What we can do, or what we should do, is to um, liaise with our ministry and play our oversight. That has been, that has been the, the action point. Thank you very much, Honorable. We are very grateful for the information. Have a great weekend. Yep. So yeah, interesting comments from the chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Mm. He seems to agree that there should be relief, not just uh, provided, not just for Ghanaian students in the Wuhan province, but also those outside who have already talked about the fact that they need some medical supplies and all that. Of course, I mean this is what we have been talking about previously because it, it just doesn't make sense to say that there are over 4,700 Ghanaian students in China and you're providing relief to only 400 or 300 students in the uh, province where this situation is critical. We spoke to some students earlier and it's clear that they are, they are, they are not going through any different situation from the, those students in the epicenter. So what's really the point to, to give relief items to those? So what happens to those of us in those areas? We are also Ghanaians, by the way. But at least he gives some assurance that that will be done. He, he's not so clear as to what exactly government is doing about it, but we, we get a sense, and he is speaking, we can't guess from a position of information as chairman of that committee, in touch with all the uh, necessary stakeholders to, um, and, and that the problem will, will, will be tackled, hopefully it will. What I am not so clear about now is to our position as a country in terms of readiness in receiving these students, because it's, it's not so <coughs> clear to me, Afri. I don't know what you made out of the honorable um, member of parliament's comment but it looks to me like he is also advising that we exercise some caution in in going about that if possible evacuation so it scares me well i i think that who has advised i have seen an uh, an article uh, authored by some uh, medical researchers as, as well last night that talks about the fact that ghana is one of the most vulnerable countries when it comes to you know this uh, particular uh, virus in terms of preparedness and so we must be careful as a country that even 
as we try to ensure that our students are not in some discomfort, we do not create a bigger problem by bringing them or evacuating them uh, from, from China. Okay, so let's now go to China. Yes. Let's, because last week we spoke to some Ghanaian students in China who said they had not received any money from the government and today the, the Member of Parliament has also reiterated the fact that some monies have been sent to students in China. So let's go back and speak to one of the executives of the uh, Union of Ghanaian Students to find out where that money has gone to and which specific students have received this money. So Divine Setrofia is the chapter president of NOOCs in Hangzhou in China. Of course, a Ghanaian student. Hello, Divine. I hope you're okay. This one that you're not having your face mask on. Are we safe? Yeah, 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 we are safe. We are safe because we are inside. So we are safe. Okay. All right. So tell us, Divine. Uh, we spoke to some student in china uh, last week and they told us that they have not received any money from the government of ghana as being reported it's not true that every Ghanaian in china uh, has received that mm -hmm. amount but what happens is that those students at the epicenter those students at who they promise uh, they have received that amount of money but not every student in china who received that money? So, you know, the media reportage is that all students in China have received that money, and and, and when your parents calls you, we are like, it's like, and now the government is kind of feeding you guys, so you are okay. So why are you complaining? But it's not true. And how does that make you feel? Ah, uh, you know, uh, as the president, you know, uh, your people always complain that that you, that the president, and it's like you are okay, you know fighting for us. It is something that we have received the money and we have sat on it. Because it's all over the media that Joe uh, Jane has given us money, but it's not true. We haven't received any amount of money. Those that received the money was those from the Epic Center. And it's like, well, what do you have to say? You have to keep on explaining yourself to them that it's not true. Those are the Epic they received the money, but not to all of us in China. Mm. Yeah. So as executives, I mean, have there been any communication with uh, the Ghanaian representatives in China? I'm talking about the, the, the ambassador to, to Ghana in China uh, concerning this situation. Yeah, we, we have held uh, various meetings with the ambassador and we have tabled our petition to him that other chapters are also complaining the same that they need some money. And it's like uh, the posture of the government is like the focus more is on the one people. Uh -huh. The focus more is on the one people. So whatever you try to table your petition, they kind of give you a response that no, you wait. And let's try and attend to those people first before we attend to the rest of you. So like uh, as we all know, politicians, it's always in the pipeline, so you're waiting for the pipeline to come. <laughs> so, um, finally, does that make you people feel like you're being uh, sidelined by the government? Oh, yeah, 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 it's true because it's like your people don't understand your followers, they don't really understand us because they think that as a leader, we have been sorted out and we are trying to speak for the government, we are not fighting for them. So always the people complaining, complaining, complaining that you are, you are you are incompetent, you are not fighting for us. But we are just a student leaders. We are not we don't have any kind of power or any mandate. What we do is that it's just to lobby and negotiate. But in the final person, in the person with the authority don't <laughs> don't wanna do it. They don't, what can you do? You just need to keep on negotiating and lobbying. Maybe one day one day they will respond to us and all of us will be okay. Thank you very much, Divine. Um, very much grateful for your time and enjoy your evening in China. You're welcome, Abner. 
All right, so Catherine, clearly, uh, he divine paints a, a clearer picture of what the situation is. Very gloomy. Uh, when we, we, we interacted with the other student the other time, it, we, we did not have this clear sense of what the situation is. I can imagine how they feel right now, pretty trapped in a different country, and they also need some form of relief from government. Yeah, especially when you hear and actually not just here but see from your colleagues in other areas that they are receiving some support and they're actually enjoying all the kind of attention the media attention and all but i see uh, more of a, a mis reportage on the part of the media because the president's statement was quite clear it mentioned the number and type of students who have received this money and not supposedly everybody as we had been hearing over the time he said it is only the students in the epicenter in the wuhan province who are receiving this money but the media report makes it look as though every Ghanaian student in china is receiving support which is not the case and i think that is what has brought us where we are now and i believe that in the coming days government will provide some more responses to the issues and the questions that are not yet clear yes. uh, to to provide a better picture of what the situation is even moving forward in terms of the evacuation and the help that they will, uh, the foreign affairs ministry will be offering these students yes and that is why abena kwabena tv would be here to give you all that you need to know we are we are following the issues from the UK, but we've got our ears and eyes everywhere in Ghana as well as in China. So we'll be telling you everything that happens as far as the government will go in supporting these students, and then whatever helps goes to them. We will also not hesitate to let you know. Um, this is where we draw the curtain today from yeah. the student circles. It's been interesting, our friend. Certainly, right. certainly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of interesting revelations, perspectives also exactly. uh, from, from the uh, Member of Parliament, Foreign Affairs Committee head and also uh, Divine right there. Mm. So more to come on that in our subsequent episode. But please don't forget to subscribe and join the conversation on social media platforms with the hashtag Abena Kabena Experience or Abena Kabena TV. Thank you so much for watching. See you same time next week. Subscribe.